Oh God, he probably walked into the scene. He was probably the one that responded. Poor guy. Officer Alex Wanish, W-A-N-I-S-H. Okay, and then if you could just make sure you stay close to the microphone so we can all hear you. And with that, Mr. Saunders, the witness is yours. Hold that microphone close to your chin. Uh, officer, how are you employed? With the City of Green Bay Police Department as a patrol officer. Uh, and how long have you been employed uh, as a patrol officer with Green Bay, Green Bay PD? Uh, since April of 2019. Uh, and is that uh, the totality of your law enforcement experience? I worked about a year and a half prior to that with the City of Manitowoc. So about uh, 2017 is when your law enforcement career started? Correct. Uh, and can uh, you outline for us uh, what training you received to be a police officer? Uh, I went through the 720 Academy at NWTC. Uh, before that, I went to UW Platteville for my four year bachelor degree in criminal justice. Okay. And uh, what are some of your regular duties as a police officer? Um, taking any dispatch call that comes out, traffic, that kind of stuff. Uh, sort of respond to the initial incidents? Correct. Uh, and then do you kind of conduct follow-through investigation as well? Yes, we do. Okay. Uh, officer, I want to ask you about uh, February 23rd of 2022. Uh, do you recall if you were uh, working in, in that capacity on that day? Yes, I was. Uh, directing your attention to about 3.25 a.m., uh, were you dispatched to a call around that time? Yes. To where were you dispatched? The address was 829 Stony Brook, City of Green Bay, Brown County. Uh, and is that a, an area of uh, Green Bay that you're familiar with in your regular patrol duties? Yes, it is. Okay. And uh, I guess what area of Green Bay is that? Uh, it's the west side, I guess the closest major intersection between Mason and military. And uh, what was the reason you were dispatched to that residence? Uh, the initial call came out that the complainant's girlfriend found her son's severed head in a bucket in the basement. Oh my God. And. Uh, did you arrive uh, at the Stony Brook Lane residence? Yes, I did. But were any other officers with you in that initial uh, time period? Officer Plunkey arrived at the same time as I did. And uh, what happened when you, uh, you got to the residence? Uh, we made contact with the complainant and then his girlfriend. Um, and we started talking to them. And then we were directed to the basement where the bucket was located. Um, Officer Plunkey remained upstairs just to keep an eye on the rest of the house. I went downstairs um, at the bottom of the stairs to the right. There was a green bucket with a shower towel on top of it. Um, just to verify we had the, an actual head in a bucket, lifted the towel off and there was in fact a human mm. severed head in the bucket. Um, so I, I wanna back up just a little bit. Uh, when you uh, got to the residence, you said you met with the uh, complainant what, was that uh, Stephen Hendricks? Correct. Okay. And then you said uh, his uh, girlfriend was also present? Yes. And uh, who is that person? Uh, first name of Tara. Tara, okay. And uh, if, uh, Officer Plonky stayed with uh, those individuals? Correct. Right? Okay, and then you went down to the basement? Yes. Is that right? Okay. Uh, and uh, you, you mentioned observing the, uh, the, the bucket. Uh, I guess where in the basement was that located? As you go down the stairs, um, if you turn to the immediate right, it was at the bottom of the stairs to the right. It was it in pretty close proximity to the stairs? Yes. Um, after you made that observation, what did you do? Uh, after I pulled the towel off? Yes. Um, I had Officer Plunky come downstairs and just verify we had, in fact, found um, a human head in the bucket. And then we started to notify a supervisor and then ask for additional units. Uh, and... Um, at that time, on February 23rd, 2022, um, did your department utilize uh, body-worn cameras? Yes. Uh, is that something that uh, was operating uh, on that day? Yes. Uh, and did you have a chance to review your body-worn camera uh, prior to your testimony today? Yes, I did. Um, if you were able to observe that here in court, would you be able to, to recognize it? We're going to see yes, body-worn camera. Amaka! Insert Amica here, for real. Um, Your Honor, I'd propose to Holy. play a, Exhibit 2. It's approximately six minutes. Any objection? No objection. Uh, <coughs> these poor officers and these <clears throat> scenes that they have to walk into. Can you imagine? Yep, that's indeed a human head in there. Poor guy.
It's like, dude, I just wanted to protect people. I don't want to find heads in buckets. He'll never unsee that, you know? This is an Amica moment here. Here's They're getting ready to play the body-worn camera from the day that Shad's mother and boyfriend called 911. Oh, yes. Hey, Jason Riddle. They are excavating in Rex's house. Yep. And found a soundproof room. Here we go. Exhibit 2 beginning at zero seconds. Be sure to check out my other videos and playlists for more true crime content. And if that's not enough, you can join our Patreon. Don't have a tinfoil hat? It's okay. We'll make you one. It's that easy. See you guys in the next video. See you later. Bye.